We're on now with Tyler Barney. Tyler attended Pembroke Pines Charter High School. Unfortunately, his high school career was cut short due to injuries that he sustained. He suffered from a torn ACL and a torn meniscus towards the end of his career. But he always kept that fire and wanted to pursue playing basketball after high school. He went on to play D2 and AIA for Ave Maria University and then later transferred to Elms College in Massachusetts where he is now. Tyler, thanks for doing this interview with us. Thanks for having me. Of course, we really do appreciate it. So what we want to get into first is what we get into with all our guests. Would you mind describing like your basketball journey from when you started playing to where you are now? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I started playing basketball when I was about four or five years old. Um, you know, it was just something that my parents wanted to get me into just to keep me active at a young age. But um, instantly for me, it was a lot more than that. Uh, probably from the first time I touched the basketball, you know, I really just fell in love with the game. Um, you know, I've been playing ever since. Played AAU ball since about seventh grade, sixth grade maybe. Played middle school ball, played high school ball, and now, thank God, I'm playing college ball. Um, like Jamar said, you know, I went to uh, Pembroke Pines Charter High School and um, played there for four years. Well, three years. Uh, right before my senior season started, I saw my ACL and my meniscus and I wasn't able to play my senior year. Um, you know, that was that was real tough on me and my family. I think the only person that was hurting more from that, other than myself, was my mom. But, uh, you know, with a strong support system and a lot of people with a lot of love around me, I was able to overcome it. Um, ended up going to college my freshman year, not playing, stayed home, but I kept working. I didn't let that phase me. Uh, my sophomore year of college, as Jamar said, I went to uh, Ave Maria University. And um, after that, I transferred up north. I uh, transferred to Elms College in Massachusetts, where I am now. Yeah, we always love hearing those uh, comeback stories. We've actually had a couple of them with the different interviews that we've done. Can you talk a little bit about more, or more about rather, having sustained that injury and what the rehab uh, the rehab process was like for you? Uh, having yeah. to work back on that? Yeah, definitely. So um, I, tore, I tore it on July 1st, 2015. So it was towards the <laughs> You remember the, the date, huh? The exact date. I'll never forget it. Never forget it. So that was uh, that was towards the end of the summer going into my senior year. Um, you know, it was really tough on me because, you know, I had a lot of big plans for my senior season. Um me and my teammates, you know, we had we had big hopes, high expectations for that year. Um, unfortunately, you know, things didn't go as planned. And, and in reality, you know, it hurt me not being able to play. But what really hurt me the most about it was not being able to help my teammates. So, um, yeah, so I tore it on July 1st, had surgery July 23rd. Um, it, took a, it took a long time, man. It took a, took a real long time. But, um, you know, like you said, I never let that. I never really let that phase me, and I kept the fire. Um, the rehab process was long. It was difficult. You know, kind of had to teach myself how to walk again, just do the simple things that you know everybody, including myself, always takes for granted. Um, you know, it, it was difficult, like I said, but like I said, also I had a lot of people around me with a lot of love and a lot of support. You know, my teammates on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I, I would be at practice. Obviously, couldn't practice, but. You know, everybody could just see it in my face that, you know, something wasn't right. I was, I wasn't, I wasn't happy like I always was. But, um, my teammates always kept me motivated, always tried to keep my head on straight, you know, kept, you know, just reassuring me that they got me. They would, they would take care of the season for me not to worry about that, for me to just, you know, focus on myself, get my knee back right and, you know, to continue to chase my dreams. Um, my mom was really like, my mom was my biggest fan. My mom's always been my biggest fan to this day. She still is. And, you know, there were, there were a lot of times where, you know, I, I felt like that was, that, that might have been God's way of telling me that, you know, there, there was something bigger for me and that basketball might have been coming to an end. And, you know, when I, when I decided to share that with my mom, you know, she told me ever since you were a little kid, this is what you've done. This is what you love. This is what, you know, this is what you do. You know, don't, don't let a, don't let a setback be the end. So, um, you know, I, I kept working hard. Like I said, the rehab was real tough. Had to learn how to walk again. Had to had to learn how to run again. 
you know, had to teach myself how to bend my knee. It was real painful. It was it was it was kind of demoralizing to a point, you know, when you have one leg big and strong, flexible, all of that, and then the next leg just looks like a toothpick and you can't really do a whole lot. You know, that that got to my head a little bit, but you know, like everything with life, you know, there's ups and downs. So I tried to never let myself really get too high or too low. Um I I got I got cleared eight months after my surgery. So, you know, that took a real long time and I was upset about it because I, I honestly felt like I was ready to go before that, but for precautionary reasons, the doctors didn't let me play. And I guess now looking back on it, that was a blessing because, thank God, I have no pain. I have no no issues with my knees anymore. Everything feels great. Everything feels back to 100%. And like I said before, thank God, now I'm in the position that I am now, and I'm playing college ball, living out my dreams. Our mom to the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, having that support system is amazing, especially um, obviously off the court now. When you were able to step back on the court, was there, like, a feeling of, like, hesitation when you played? Or was there a time where you were like, I, I, I'm pretty sure this is at full strength, but I don't want to push it, like, a little, like, too much? Um, You know, it, it's kind of weird because that that's what you would really expect, you know? Like, somebody who hasn't played a real game in eight months, somebody who hasn't really played basketball at all in quite some time, you know, to go from playing every single day of my life to not being able to do anything for eight months, it's it's kind of weird. But, you know, truly and honestly, I, I didn't really have any fear when I came back. You know, the way that I've always been taught is that everything happens for a reason. And in that eight months, you know, I, I kind of got it through my head that, that for whatever reason it happened, it happened. It was in the past. You know, I worked my butt off to get back on the court. And then once I was back on the court, honestly, it wasn't a whole lot of fear in me. You know, I played the same way that I played before. Obviously, you know, I wasn't as good right away. It was difficult. You know, eight months away from it, nobody's going to be as good as they were. But mm -hmm. as far as fear, as far as fear is concerned, I didn't, I didn't have any. You know, I, I, I put it in my head that, you know, it was done. It was in the past. And, you know, God forbid if it were to happen again, then that would just be God's plan and it would just be another chapter in the book. Thank God, knock on wood, it hasn't happened again. You know, I'm praying that it never does happen, but I never really let myself play with any fear because, in my opinion, if, you, if you're if you playing with fear, then you're already defeated. And when you play scared, that that's how injuries do happen in the first place. No, that's, that's definitely true, and that's, that's a really powerful mindset to have as well. So speaking speaking about your game, obviously you've been playing for a very long time. You had the injury, a setback, you worked your way back. How could you describe your game now? Do you feel you're at an all time high, and and what do you think is the most the most useful or the most threatening part of your game towards any defense? Uh, um, absolutely. You know, I I do think that you know I I I am better than I ever have been before. Thank God. You know, I feel like every day is a uh, Every day is a grind, and my goal every day when I wake up is just to be a better version of myself than I was yesterday. Um, in high school, you know, I didn't really have all that of an important role because, you know, I had I had a lot of guys that, you know, went on to play Division One basketball and that will, God willing, end up make it to the NBA sometime soon. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't really have to do a whole lot. I kind of just took a back seat. You know, when I, when I was called on, when my number was called on, I was just always prepared. You know, in high school, I was really just a shooter. Like, that's all people really knew me as. You know, I was just that spot-up guy that just played off of everybody else. Um, you know, when I when I got to college, surprisingly, you know, typically roles reduce when you get to college. When I got to college, it was a little bit of the opposite. You know, I had the ball in my hands majority of the time. You know, I was I was called upon to make plays, score, assist, all of that, whatever, whatever was necessary for the time being. So, um, you know, I, w I would say – that right now the most dangerous part of my game is just being able to create plays for myself and for my teammates. Um, I wouldn't really call myself a scorer. I wouldn't call myself a passer. You know, I, I would really just call myself a playmaker if I had to, you know, give myself one specific, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I really I really feel like I could put pressure on the defense, on any defense when I have the ball in my hands. Um, you know, all, all of that really just boils down to confidence. And, um, you know, I, I've been told from the time that I started playing basketball to, you know, just play like I'm the best player on the court at all times because 
In all honesty, if you go into a game without that mindset, then you're already defeated before the game starts. So I just try to do everything in my power. I control what I can control, and I leave the rest up to God. And, um, you know, yeah, so so basically, you know, I, I feel like I can score it. I feel like I can involve everybody else. So I would really just call myself a playmaker, to be honest. Definitely, definitely. Now, now I have to ask you, um, we had your former teammate, Jivu, as an interview a couple weeks back, and he had a, you know, a similar comeback story from injury. So, you guys link all the time, you guys are friends. Who's better? Uh, that's my guy, <laughs> man. Jivu's, was, was my brother, you know. I can't, I can't say who's better. We play different positions. I'll just leave it at that, but Jivu's better. Uh, are you gonna man. give a political answer, T? Absolutely, man. You know me. <laughs> you know, Jibu's, Jibu's my brother. Jibu's always been family to me from the time that I met him. You know, Jibu went through a lot just like I did. And, you know, I couldn't be more proud of the position that he's put himself in, the opportunities that he's taken advantage of and cashed in on. You know, Jibu's a great kid and he's an even harder worker. So that's my guy, man. I love Jibu. That's good, bro. That's a good answer. I honestly <laughs> was hoping to get, like, a, a little back and forth. But... <laughs> I completely understand. Now, with the season be- has, having begun, is there, like, an individual goal that you had before the season and, like, a team goal you guys set out um, before, like, the season starts? And, like, how are those playing to what you guys are uh, planning before the season? So, um, you know, as a team, you know, we really just we really just want to, you know, go out and execute every night. You know, we want to win as much as possible. But the overall team goal was to really win the conference championship. Um, mm-hmm. being that, you know, we just got back from winter break. We, we only had two games, two conference games prior to the break. Unfortunately, we dropped both of those two games, but we got a lot of, we got a lot of tough conference opponents coming up here. Uh, we got a game this weekend against a conference, uh, opponent. We got a game next week conference as well. So, you know, we're, we're really just trying to lock in right now and just, you know, excel to our fullest of potential and God willing, you know, still be able to win the conference. As far mm-hmm. as, um, as far as, you know, individual goals, you know, I, I set myself individual goals, but my individual goals really were, you know, more so as I graduated more than, you know, individual season. But really, okay. I just I just try to go out every game, play my hardest, give my team everything I can and, you know, just help us win, help us, help us, you know, do what we want to do, what we set out to do. Okay, great. Those are some... Some deep and thoughtful answers, bro. We appreciate you. We appreciate you being on. Absolutely, bro. Thank you for having me. Of course. We really do appreciate it, and we do hope you guys the best this year. Yeah, we wish nothing for the best. We're going to be looking at those stats. We hope you play well, and we hope you guys do win and ultimately win the conference like you guys had the plan. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on. Of course. Have a good one. You too.